Welcome back to another Construct video and as you can see in this video we're going to be making moving platforms for our 3D games. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is make sure you watch the other two videos in this series. The first one being how to create a really simple 3D game and the second one being adding jumping and gravity. Also an additional third one I'll add in the description if you want to start designing your level as well. So how do we start adding a 3D platform? Well, there's two main methods I want to show you today. One is a premium version, which means you need to pay for Construct, and the other one is a free alternative. So what I'll do is I'll put some timestamps in the description and on screen for where to jump to, depending on which part you're watching for. So let's start with the premium version first. With the premium version, you get access to something called a family, and this is extremely useful. So what we're going to do is first create a new object, grab a 3D shape, and this is going to be our moving platform. Create it and click anywhere. Now for this, what I'm going to do is just move this one to one side. And it's got a Z height of 120. I'm going to make the Z elevation minus 120 so it's flat with the floor. Now I can go to my families and I'm going to add a new family. And I'm just going to put my moving platform in only. It's really important that you only add this one in at the moment. Now for this family, we're going to call this 3D collision as anything that's been added to this family will have the same 3D collision applied to it. We're also going to right click family behaviors and we're going to add the solid behavior as this is required for us to do 3D collision. Then we can go to our event sheet and I'm going to click at the bottom here or at the top and then holding shift I'm going to click on the other side and I can right click and replace object. I want to remove any reference to my block and I want to do it with my new family called 3D Collision. This now means that anytime we're dealing with collision, we're actually referring to our 3D Collision family as opposed to this block. Finally, we can take our block, edit its behaviors, and we can delete the solid behavior. And we can go to our 3D Collision and we can add the block behavior. This now means that both of these objects, the block and the moving platform, now have 3D collision. And it means we can add extra behaviors to our moving platform, being the sign behavior, the orbit, or the rotate. So if I just add the sign like so, go to my layout, and now we'll have this moving and still have its collision on there, so I can step on this block. This is the way that I recommend, because now if you've got anything else you want to add 3D collision to, we can just simply go as this family and we can add extra stuff to it. So it's a really, really simple way and it's really effective, but sadly only available in the premium version. Now, if you want to jump later to the video and I'll put the time on the screen, I'll start showing you how you can implement these behaviors and start doing some really, really clever stuff inside of 3D. Now, if you're on the free version of Construct, sadly we don't have access to families, but there is a workaround that we can still use. So first thing we need is to insert a new object, grab a 3D shape, and we're gonna call this moving platform. And just click anywhere. And I'm just going to hit the X. I'm going to keep this as a dice for now. Now the height for this is 120. And I'm just going to do the Z elevation to minus 120. This means the block is flat to the floor. And it means that we can walk straight onto it. So how do we get this to work without having to rewrite all this code again? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go to our block. And we're going to give it a new behavior. And we're going to give it the pin behavior. Now, this is really important because what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually take our block and anytime we create a 3D platform, we're gonna create an invisible block around it because that already has our collision on there. So this is really easy to do. We just go to our event sheets. We scroll to the bottom and add a new event. I wanna check anytime our moving platform has been created. So when it's been created, we actually want to take our system and we want it to create a new object. Now the object that we want is we want a block. And this block is going to spawn at the moving platform's X position and the moving platform's Y position. Once we've got that, we also need to set its Z elevation to make sure it's the same as the moving platform. So this is an option right at the bottom. So again, this will just be moving platform.z elevation. Now our moving platforms might come in lots of shapes and sizes, so we need to make sure that our block matches. So we're gonna take our block, scroll down and do set size. And this will be moving platforms width and the moving platforms height. 
We also need to make sure that the Z height is the same when we're dealing with 3D as well. So we'll come to our block. We've got this option called set Z height. So this is how tall it is on the Z axis. And again, this is just going to be whatever it is for the moving platform. So not Z elevation, Z height. Now we've got that all in place. We need to do a couple more things. So now we actually want to take our block and now it's in the right place. We can actually set it invisible because we don't want to see it. It is just there to be a collision box and a collision box only. Finally, we can take our block and we're going to pin to object and that object can be our moving platform. Now the most important part for this is that you take the time to scroll down and take this option to say Z elevation. This means if you've got platforms that move up and down, the block will move up and down with it. And that's it. We can now go to our layouts and we can test this. And we've got our block and we can stand on it. Now, because we want it moving, we can now go to our moving platform, edit its behaviors, and just add the sign behavior. And now we've got a moving platform that will keep its collision as we follow it along. Whether you've watched the premium part or the free part, you've now got a moving object, but what can we do with this? Well, first thing we can do with our moving platform is we don't necessarily need to use the sign behavior. I want to show you the other two behaviors we can use first, and then we're gonna come back to sign because it is one of the most important ones. So the first one that we might want to look at is the rotate option. So if I put this on, and the best way to demonstrate this is to make my platform a little bit wider, and let's make it a little bit thinner. And if I hit play, you'll see that this platform's rotating. Now it's a little bit quick and I'm really rubbish. So we might want to take and slow it down a little bit. So it's down at 180. I'm gonna put this down to 30 and just hit play. So now we've got this slow moving platform that we're able to jump on. And again, it's keeping its collision. And if we walk off the edge, we will fall off the edge. So that's one option that we can do. Just going to edit this behavior and delete this now and again you can create more than just one object you don't have to have just the moving platform you can create other objects as well so you can have separate ones for moving platforms rotating and then you can add them either to your family or repeat that line of code i showed you in the free version the second one is the orbit behavior now this one's a really really cool one because it orbits around we have got the option to match rotation so it'll rotate as well and we've got its primary and secondary radius, which I'm just going to up to 200 for this short demo. And again, I'm just going to put the speed down. We'll put this speed down to about 50, just so it's a bit easier to jump on it. So now this one will rotate round in a circle. And this is just a really, really nice sort of platform to have. The player can step on it and follow it round. And if I can stay on it all the way to the end, I can then jump off. So there are two of the other options that we can do. Now I said we're gonna come back to the sign behavior because it is one of the more exciting ones. So I'm gonna just edit these behaviors and take off the orbit one. Let's look at the sign behavior and how we can affect it in 3D. So first thing we've got is we've got a horizontal movement. So this is where it will move left and right. The next one we've got is our vertical movement. Now this is forward and backwards because we are dealing with 3D. Now we're going to skip the rest of these and go down to Z elevation. Z elevation will be up and down. So now we've got a platform that we can move up and down on, almost like an elevator. And again, we can adjust this so we can go up higher or lower. It's a little bit jumpy when you are going down and up sometimes. And that's just unfortunately what we've got to work with with the gravity options at the moment. But what if we want to take this further? What if we want a platform that could do multiple things? It can move up and down or it can move left and right. What we're going to do for this is we're going to add on a second sign behavior. And this means that we can control this object in two ways. So the first one is going to be the Z elevation. I'm going to actually make this go up to 200 instead. And the second one is going to be horizontally. So this is now going to move at diagonal. So it goes across and up and then across and down. And let's make this move 200 as well. So now if I had to test this, We'll be able to see both of those behaviors acting at the same time. And now we've got a platform that moves up and down a little bit quickly, but we can now move on to this platform and uh, rubbish as usual. You're starting to get the idea of how we can start combining these together. Now you can add a third sign behavior. 
so you can have three things on the go at the same time. This is actually what I recommend. So I'm going to change this one to vertical. You might think it's weird why I'd recommend this because if we change the vertical one to be 200 as well, you see that this is a, a bit of a strange platform as it's doing quite a lot of things at the same time. And it's a very, very niche circumstance to have a platform moving diagonally up and down. It's definitely one that we might use in our game, but how often are we going to use it? Well, the reason I'm telling you to do this is because this is the most important moving platform because it is the first one you've created. So all other moving platforms will follow the rules of this one. So what I recommend is taking this first one, adding free sign behaviors, and then turning two of them off. This means now when you copy and paste this and you create any new ones, they're going to have the first one on, which is the one that you're most likely to use. So let's say that most of my game is going to involve Z elevation sign behavior. And then the others, if I need them, I can just tick them on as I need them. But by default, any new moving platforms that I create will have those uh, second two sign behaviors ticked off already. So I can just tick them on if I need them for that particular platform. I can also decrease the speed by taking this period and making it longer. And we've just got a lot of control that we can do. So hopefully you've got lots of ideas of what you can do with this now. I think definitely some parkour games are now available to make in this or a total wipeout style course. But it just allows you to flesh out your 3D games a lot more. Let me know what other things you'd like to see in 3D. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.